don't know where he went. <laughs> Buddy, where are you, bud? I looked all over. I don't know where he went. Oh. Oh. Buddy! Buddy, you came back! Buddy! You're back! Oh, thank God you're back! Where were you? Get out of the water before you drown! <laughs> Come on! Come on, boy. I'll help you out. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you're back! Where were you? Oh, here. I got some steak. Go ahead. Have some steak. Oh, good, huh? I'm so happy you're back, buddy. I'm so happy. Welcome back, everyone. It's Kirok here. Glad for you to join me on another episode of A New Perspective. So as you can see, I've dressed up the... Uh, the portal room from the last episode uh, I threw in the lava pot lights as I mentioned I would uh, there was one person from uh, the comments that uh, uh, put forward a suggestion and that was Ruark 88 uh, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description to his uh, YouTube channel I've been watching some of his stuff it's pretty good stuff so uh, I suggest you guys go and check it out um, but he suggested I place posts and wither skulls on those posts in here and when 1.4 comes out I am definitely going to do that. Um, the other thing he suggested was putting netherrack in behind these uh, pot lights but right now I think the netherrack looks great as it is with this little waterfall uh, lava. Oh I gotta watch out I don't fall in. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what I may do is once I find a fortress is replace the stone brick, the smooth stone brick, or sorry, the smooth stone uh, that you see on the ceiling and the walls with um, nether brick. Uh, I'm afraid it might make the room look black, but I'll try it out, or too dark, I mean, but I'll try it out anyways. So um, what I do want to show you guys is what I've been working on. Uh, not a whole lot. I've, I've completed some of the storage units in the warehouse or in the storage house. And then also the storage units in the wood yard. Come on over. I'll show you guys what it looks like. So you can see I finished the uh, other side in the room. Uh, over here I have iron. Uh, then this one is going to be gold. I just don't have enough blocks to or gold to make blocks. So I threw one in here right now. And uh, this is glass. This one here is sand. Just like the other side where I have the gravel, I put uh, wood planks in the corners. When I go up to it, they pull back. When I come back out, they all come back. And then this is sandstone brick. Yeah. So basically the center aisles are done. Um, as I collect more materials, I'll start filling in the remaining spots where those materials go on the outside edge. And that way, from a distance, I can identify what's in each of the chests. Of course, 1.4 is going to bring that new feature where they have, um, what do they call picture frames, where you throw in an item and you can identify what's in a chest by having that that item in the frame that's pretty cool man they should have come out with that a long long time ago but regardless I'm gonna keep this the way it is and if I ever make like a small um, uh, room where I have certain items in chests, then I'll use the new feature that they've added so what we're gonna work on this episode <clears throat> excuse me is we're gonna make a wheat farm the idea behind the weave farm is that I can then uh, grow my creatures, such as cows, sheep. Um, once I got those guys going, pigs as well, I'll be able to collect what I need from them, uh, better food other than the bread that I've been eating. And more importantly, I want to get the, the um, hide from the cows so that I can make proper bookshelves and make an enchanting room. Uh, ne one of the next steps is going to be building the, the the machine that I've designed to harvest the animals. Uh, that'll probably be the next episode, and it's going to be a big endeavor. 
because uh, it's a big project, probably one of my biggest builds. But um, after that, I'll probably do a an episode where I build the enchantment room. Nothing special, something simple. Uh, and then we will start enchanting some of our tools. So come on out uh, over to the area where I have all the stuff and we will start building a wheat farm. Oh wait, almost forgot. Uh, I want to show you the wood yard. This way guys. And here are the storage stations. Um, this one here and this one here are complete because I had birch wood and oak wood in abundance. When I need uh, wood, I move up to it. Chests are revealed. I grab my wood. Uh, the top shelf or the top uh, chest, I'm going to store uh, saplings as well as um, leaves if I harvest any leaves. And that will go for any of the wood types as you can see. Uh, this one here is going to be um, spruce wood and this one at the end is going to be jungle wood. Uh, two trees that I haven't yet harvested and, and grown. So once I start grabbing or gathering those types of woods, I will fill these in uh, around the edges where they're missing. And that's basically it. Alright, now let's go and get that wheat farm put together. I'll see you guys there in a second. And here it is, guys. This is the wheat farm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, the wheat farm that I've designed, this one that you see before me, isn't really a very efficient design, but it's a cool design, and that's why I decided to stick with it. Uh, the amount of resources that go into it for the yield you get isn't the greatest, uh, which explains why I have one completely set up, and over here, where I have this empty spot, I'm going to set up another one. That way, with two side by side, I should get some decent rates uh, for wheat harvesting. Uh, although, uh, you know that, that other wheat uh, farm that I created that I've been using temporarily for now, that one produces a heck of a lot more wheat with a lot less resources. But it's so cool that um, I really like the way it works. I'll show you how it works. Watch this. Oh, yeah. All of these pressure plates that you see going down the center, they are inactive, so they don't actually do anything except for this very first pressure plate that I'm about to walk on. So when I walk on it, it uh, there you go, and the water comes and pushes all the wheat and seeds to the center. So the idea is, is that when I walk on it, I would walk straight through or straight across to pick everything up like that. So I just walk across, pick up all my wheat, pick up all my um, my seeds, and then I walk back. And when I walk back out, I trigger it again, and it goes back to normal status. And at this point, it's pretty simple to just go across. Uh, the The nice thing is, is the tilled earth remains tilled, and all I have to do is grab the seeds, throw them back on, wait for for them to grow, and do another harvest. So what we're going to do together, guys, is on that other plot over there, we're going to build one, and I'll show you step-by-step step how to do it. Okay, so the first thing we got to do is hollow this out. Uh, we're going to go five deep. So I'm going to keep going, and you guys can watch as I do some uh, time-lapse video. And there we are. Now that we have a 5D pole, we can start filling it with the things that are necessary to make the wheat farm work. I'll bring you guys back when it's daytime and we will begin uh, placing in the redstone and the repeaters and the redstone torches. All right, welcome back guys. So you can see over here, I've placed ladders and over here, 
I placed another ladder uh, simply because once uh, I start filling this in with the appropriate components I guess you could call them uh, I won't be able to get from one side to the other and this will be the only way in and out from underneath so what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin um, placing a line of smooth stone blocks for where the redstone is going to travel across from one end to the other. Uh, we're going to do that over here. And this uh, row of blocks is going to be where the there we go, where the redstone is going to rest. So And on the sides of these blocks, we're going to put a whole bunch of redstone torches. There we go. The pistons that uh, bring up the soil uh, on which the wheat will grow is going to be powered by these redstone torches. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to throw on the pistons that uh, will will actually push the soil blocks up, uh, the soil blocks where the wheat grows. And uh, I'm just putting a couple of guides here in order to be able to place those pistons correctly. Uh, like so. Actually, I made a mistake. We don't need the uh, redstone torches on the ends. It's supposed to be a total of 12 pistons. Uh, 12, is it? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 24, actually. 24 pistons. Uh, the ones on the ends were extras that I didn't require. So now I'm going to jump over and start placing my, my actual pistons there we go that's what I want Let's see if I can get on top now just keep placing them all and once I've placed all the pistons in place we will uh, continue with the wiring and placing other pistons for uh, holding back the water I need to pull the uh, the far end wall. <clears throat> this is the end of the wheat farm. Uh, on the other side over there is where I'm going to have the active pressure plate. Uh, this one here, I have to go over at least one more to fit the wiring in. Oh, look at that. I just encroached upon the, uh, the sugar cane farm. That's okay. Uh, for the wiring that I need to go here, it's not going to be that big a deal even if the two of them connect. Oh, uh, wait a second. Maybe the redstone might interfere. I'll have to figure it out and I'll be back. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is basically place a row of dirt. Now this dirt is temporary. Uh, it just indicates where I'm going to rest the other set of sticky pistons. These are the pistons that um, 
uh, will uh, release the water flow from up top. And then I believe I need one more row of stone. And on this one, we're going to have another set of uh, redstone torches. So I'm going to go up top now. And up at the top, I'm going to start adding in the second set of pistons. And of course, I'm placing the pistons in the same spot or in line with each of these other pistons. And then I'll, whoops, I don't need that one. And then what I'll do is I'll uh, run over to the other side and set it up the same as this side. Now with both sides set up the same way, uh, I'm going to run to the bottom and get rid of those two lines of dirt that I put in for positioning and start throwing in the remainder of the redstone torches. So it looks like my redstone wiring for this wheat farm is going to interfere with my uh, reed farm or my sugarcane farm. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over by one and that should avoid any complications or problems. And of course when I break this it might set off the uh, sugarcane collection but that's not a big deal at this moment. So let's, uh, yeah, I just heard it go. Let's fix this up. We'll move it over, like so. And there we go. Function restored. It's not going to hurt it that much with one shift over in that, uh, in that redstone line. So let's continue on with our build on the wheat farm. Okay, as far as the wiring goes, <coughs> we're going to place a repeater here, like so. Uh, then we're going to extend the signal out to the right and the left. I'm going to do just one side, but remember what you see me doing on this side is reflected on the other side. So I'm going to place a cable like that. There we go. And this, on um, this end, actually let me finish this part first. I'm going to bring it all the way across. Get rid of this block. Place another one right in here. There will be a repeater placed here, which is going to draw the power from the line that comes here and send it down this line of blocks. Uh, here, I'm going to place in an inverter. So it's basically a block with a torch on it. And then place redstone at the end. There we go. So you'll notice that uh, that one piston retracted. And once I place a line of redstone all the way down like so, you will notice that they will all retract. So I'm going to set up the other side and, uh, and then basically our wiring is done all except for the other end where I'm going to throw in a, uh, a T flip flop. Uh, the T flip flop is something that I learned from Cranky. Uh, he spent some time and kind of showed me how to build it. Uh, I've always tried to understand how that works, but I can never really wrap my head around it. So thank you, Cranky, for taking the time and showing me. It, uh, it's awesome, and this will be my very first build that I'm using it in. So I will set up the other side and come back, and then we will set up that T flip-flop. So we're going to need to uh, dig a nice little hole here. Um, We'll make it a fair size, place the T-flip-flop on the inside, and uh, once we have it set up, we will cover it back up again. 
All right, so we're going to set it up here. It's going to be a, a one deep, two wide hole. And then over here, we're going to have another hole. Inside this hole is going to be the output of the T flip flop and send power to this line over here. Um, so let's build the T flip flop. Uh, if I remember correctly, it was a non sticky piston here and a non sticky piston there. One block that uh, shifts over to output power to that line. And then up on top of that, we have this. Uh, on top of this, we have redstone wire. And then on one end and the other end, there we go, we have uh, two redstone torches. So uh, if I remember correctly, this should work by placing power into this line on the end here. Uh, do I have a button? No. I will demonstrate with a button. Let me craft one real quick. Whoops, nope. That was a pressure plate. All right, here's a button. Place it, and what we should see is the block shift. There we go, when I press that button. And it stays over and does not flip back. And then when I press the button a second time, the block shifts back and that's what I want so that way when I walk across at the top here that pressure plate and go along the rest of the pressure plates uh, the soil is triggered uh, the soil pistons are triggered to go up and unroot the wheat and the water pistons are triggered to go down and allow the water to free flow towards the center um, now the actual button at, or the actual pressure plate that's above here is going to be wired in specially over here to um, provide power to the line right over at the top here where I place the button. So I'm going to get rid of that button. We don't need it. There we go. All right, we're going to do the last of the wiring. Um, the way it's going to work is this block has to disappear. There we go. And um, we're going to place a redstone repeater there which drives power into this block in front of me on top of that we're going to place a redstone dust which connects to the line that heads down the uh, down the whole length of the the wheat farm and then we're going to place redstone here and here and as you can see that triggered everything um, so at this point we need to place in the triggering mechanism from up above which has the um, the pressure plate in place. So we're going to do this, 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 like so. Oh, yeah. There. Okay, good. And now, um, the way we trigger from the pressure plate above that block uh, is we place a sticky piston. Oh, that went in upside down. Uh, come on this side, I'll give you guys a better angle. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to place a sticky piston right about there. Good. And uh, there was, there's going to be a wooden block right on it. Now, this wooden block is going to transfer power to that redstone line that you see up there before you. Um, in order to do that, this block has to be energized, but I don't want it to be energized in the position it's in. I want it to be energized when it extends out to that position, which will in turn uh, transfer power to the right place. There we go. So the way to do this, grab that, is to place a n another block beneath it and then a redstone torch right there. So this redstone torch that I've placed does not extend to give power to this redstone line that you see in front of you. Uh, but when I step on a pressure plate on that block up there, uh, this sticky piston will shoot out uh, and then this block will come into contact with that redstone line and because it's powered by the redstone torch beneath it it will trigger the T flip flop so let's go upstairs place one of the uh, pressure plates and see how it works alright so I'm gonna place it into position and you'll notice if I come across that pressure plate if you look down there you're gonna see that uh, that wooden block shoot across and because it gains power from the redstone torch, it'll deliver power into the T flip flop, which in turn uh, will affect the pistons that are set up in our whole wheat farm. So keep an eye down there. And there we go.
So I actually stepped on it twice. I actually stayed on it a little bit long, and then I went back onto it again, and they did a whole cycle. If I do it once and come off, the pistons will stay in position. If I do it again, they will change position. So you guys were looking at the T flip flop. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the piston side when uh, when I hit that that pressure plate. And notice because of the inverter that or the inverse uh, how do I say it because we inverted the signal on the other ends when I do this step on step off uh, one set of pistons will shoot up and the other set of pistons will retract and again the opposite will happen and that's what we want because we want the the set of pistons in the center to shoot up and dislodge the wheat and then we want the pistons on the other side or on the uh, outside ends uh, to shoot down and allow water to flow down like that so that the wheat collects in the middle. Now that all the wiring is done, we need to place water. Once we place the water, and we got to be careful how we do it because we don't want it to run off and knock off some of the redstone wiring. Uh, but once that's done, we will fill in the rest and we can start planting wheat. So I'll bring you guys back uh, as soon as the whole thing is put together, but I'll show you bits and pieces as I add the water. And this is the water that's hidden, which keeps the, uh, the dirt hydrated so that the plants can grow properly. And one of the last things left to do is basically to light up the inside of the whole wheat farm. Um, it, it's large enough for creatures to spawn, uh, like any mobs would spawn or hostile mobs would spawn in here. Spiders, skeletons, creepers, and so on. So, I mean, you could fill it up with blocks, but... In reality, a few place torches will prevent any from, any spawning from occurring. I'm going to go and set up the other side in the same fashion, and then we're going to go back top side, and up there I will place the last bit of water. Okay, we're going to seal up the hole. The grass will grow on it later on. <clears throat> so this hides the T flip flop, and I lit it up down there to make sure no mobs spawn. The next step is uh, putting in the proper trenches, uh, well, one trench for the water. So we're going to do that by placing a uh, row of s uh, stone blocks all the way across. And this has to be done on both sides. Whoops. Then I need to place three more rows of uh, stone. One row will cover the water, as you see here. Um, same thing is going to be reflected on the other side, like so. And then one down the center. This one is the one I'm going to put the pressure plates on that uh, keep the water from flowing over into the center area. Um, so I'm going to place those all the way down. Then the final step is, before adding the water, is putting half slabs all along these sticky pistons. So I'm going to do that. Once it's done, I will bring you guys back. And there we go. It's all done. 
Only thing left to do is to till the soil, plant some seeds, and uh, wait for the harvest. I'll give you a quick dry run. So if I hit the first pressure plate here, like that, yeah, you can see that the uh, the pistons that hold the half slabs up retract, allowing the water to flow through, and the pistons where the wheat would be growing pop up, and that would basically allow the wheat to collect in the center here. So if I go over it one more time, it stops it. There we go. And that's all there is to it. It's pretty cool. As I said, it's not very efficient, but um, I think I really like it, so I decided to stick with this design. So what I'm going to do at this point is uh, till it uh, puts, allow the wheat to grow, and then I will show you guys again it working with a full harvest. And here we are again with the full growth of, a, of my first harvest on this wheat farm. I'm going to go through and collect the wheat. That's all there is to it. So, guys, I'm going to end the episode at this point. I hope you liked this episode and the wheat farm that I designed. Um, what I'll do off camera is I will prepare down next to the spider spawner an enchantment room. I won't finish it off because I'm going to need bookshelves, and for that, I will need uh, cowhide. So in the next episode, I'll show you what I've got done so far for the enchantment room, and then we will build the animal processing center. Glad you guys could join me. Hope you liked the episode. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back, everyone. It's Kirok here. Glad for you to join me with, for another episode of Let's Take It Again. <laughs>